In this video, I'm going to show you how to replicate a tab bar in Godot. You can use this for a inventory system, a settings menu, or just to replicate the tab bar across this bottom of the screens like you would see on mobile devices. To start, let's go over the project settings. So project, project settings. In my case, for my window, I have a set for a 320 by 568. That's the size of an iPhone SE for reference. For the window width override, I just multiply those by two. And the stretch, I have mode, canvas items, and aspect to expand. And I also have the orientation set to sensor so that if you want to rotate your device, you can. Another very important one is to search for touch and input device pointing. Make sure both of these are enabled, otherwise the touch area that we're going to do later won't work in the editor, but it will on the mobile device. That's it for that. Close that. And then we're, first we're going to start off with the background for the tab bar. So we're going to do a color rect, then anchor across the bottom wide, so that way it always stays to the full width. In my case, I want to do a custom minimum height of 80 and set the background color to a black. Now that we have the background, select the background. We want to add an HBox container and set its anchors to the full area. Then within that HBox, we want to add our texture buttons. And in this case, I just have a few icons from another project I've been working on. So grab that, put it into the normal. And then we want to ignore texture size and keep the aspect. And scroll down, go to layer and put a custom size in, custom minimum size. So in this case, it's pretty small. So I'm going to leave it at 3030. Okay. And then to center the buttons, we want to select the HBox container again. I change the alignment from begin to center. So once you have your icon in there, if you want to add a label underneath it, you want to add it as a child of the texture button. So add label. And then I usually set the anchor to center. And then put in what you want it to be. So like background. Okay, and then if you want to change the font, you can go down a little bit to theme override, font size, and change the font to something not that small, maybe like a 12 or something. So it's pretty small. Okay. And then next we want to add, go back up to the texture button, hit the plus and look for a touch screen button. This will be like a collision shape, essentially. We want to add a shape to it. Add rectangular shape. And then in this case, if you click on the rectangle shape, you can put in the, the size here. So I liked 75 by 75. And then you need to move that touch screen button so that it covers the area that you actually want it to work. So over here, switch over to the move mode and line it up to roughly so that it's in the center. So the reason I'm giving this such an empty area on the bottom is to make sure it has room for that little black bar or white bar that comes up whenever you're on a mobile device. We need to make sure they include the touch screen button. Otherwise, the user is going to have to touch on that precise location of that button or the label. So with having that extra space, it's a lot easier for them to use. And then what we want to do is essentially duplicate this. However many buttons you're going to have across this bar. And then to separate them a little bit, you go to your HBox container, go to theme override, constants, separation, and put in something that works for you. In this case, 50 works great. So once you have the spacing and the layout that you like, you can go back through and change those textures around. You don't have to do it for each one of the texture buttons and the labels, but essentially the, the sizing and everything is done at this point. I do recommend making the button name and the touch area names match what you're going to use them for. So for instance, I'm going to hide this and bring up the one I already pre-built. So I have a backgrounds, profile settings, and sound. We go to that scene 
If you notice, I have the background TB for texture button, profile, settings, and sound. What you want to do next is add each one of these safe, or sorry, the touch areas into a group. To add them to a group, you want to select the touch area, go to the node tab, click on groups, and then put in what you want the name to be. So in this case, I'm naming it touch screen button. Copy that, hit add, and then we want to do that for each one of these touch areas. And then you'll know that they are in a touch group by this icon that appears to the right of the name. Once that's done, you also want to go to each button, actual texture button, select them all, go to the inspector, and add them to a button group. You'll see why in a bit. So uh, go into the inspector for each one of these buttons, button group, new button group, and then save this under, I just made a folder called resources, and we're gonna name these tab bar button group. Okay, so you'll see them, see that the name is here. You don't need to change anything else. That path automatically fills in once you save it. You don't need to give it a name. It will just automatically work for what we need it to do later, which is essentially if you pick one of them, it's going to affect the others. So that way you don't need to be toggling everything on and off manually. And once you apply those into a button group, you're going to get an error on each one of these. that says button groups is intended to be used with buttons that have a toggle mode. So to enable that, all you need to do is hit this check mark. Once you do that, those warnings will go away. And then next, what you want to do is right click on each one of these and access as unique name. That way we can access them through our script later. And then if you probably noticed, I have this jumble of letters up there. Essentially, I created a panel container. By default, the panel containers come in with like this gray background. If we make it full area, you'll see it easier. If you want to be transparent, you want to go over to Theme, Override, Style. And then in the drop down, you can either choose Style Box Empty, that'll make it clear. Or if you want to make it a solid color, you can choose New Style Box Flat. And by default, it's going to be like a gray color there as well. If I click on the, the Style Box, and then the BG color you can make this Alpha to Zero. That'll make it transparent as well. Or if you want to make it a different color, that's where you can do it which was just a panel that was the full screen. And then I took off the size of this. So if we were to have this as a full, it would take up the full screen, but we may eventually have stuff down there which would overlap the tabs. So what we want to do then is go to transform and size. And on the Y, subtract the size of a black bar in this case. And then this was 83 for this pre-made one. So now anytime we make this, the top bar will change, but it won't be overlapped by the tabs. So once the main panel container is set up accordingly for the right size, you can then make children for each one of the tabs that you created. And then in this case, I just have a label saying which, what they are, just so you'll be able to see it easily whenever they switch. Okay, next we want to get into this script. We also want to make sure that each one of these tab panels, this is what actually will show up on the screen for the user. We want to make sure those are accessed via use unique names as well. And then we can drag them over. If you hold or drag it over and then before you let go, hold control or command, it'll automatically put in the on ready for you. We want to do that for the panels as well as the buttons. And then on function ready, I'm going to pass for now. And next, we want to set up the um, connections for all this to work nicely. I like to do that in its own separate function. Set up connections. 
and call that within ready. And then within function within setup connections, we want to call we want to get access to those touch areas that we set up in the group earlier. So var touch areas equals get tree dot get node in group. And then you're going to look for that string name of what you put in as the touch area. So if you don't remember, go to one of the touch areas, go to nodes, groups, and then you can double click on that to, to be able to access the name. Put it in quotes. That'll go away. And then we need to connect the pressed signal for each one of those. We're going to do a for loop or area in touch area and do area dot connect rest then callable and we're going to do a self and a function we haven't made yet but it's going to be on touch area rest and then what we're going to be doing is actually passing in this touch area to that function. So to do that, we need to hit period, bind, and then area. So anytime it iterates through this, it's going to put in the touch area and pass along itself, essentially. Okay, so grab that name so we make sure we spell it right. Function, touch area as the parameter, that way we know we're looking for a touch area. So at this point, we just want to make sure that this actually works. So we're going to do print touch area string touch area dot name. What we're going to be doing is, depending on which touch area was tapped, when we hit the button, we should now see the names popping up. That way we know it, all the connections are working. Okay, so now that we know that the touch areas are working, now we need to set up the buttons with that button group that we did earlier. So now it actually does what we want it to do. Function on tab rest. And then it's gonna look for a button. So now the reason I'm doing this, creating a separate function for the buttons, I wanna be able to set up so that whenever the one button is pressed, the other ones automatically change. And to do that, this seemed to be the easiest way for me to figure it out. So, so the first thing we need to do is iterate through all the buttons in the button group that this button is part of. To do that, we want to go for a button just so it's a separation and button dot gets button group parentheses period get buttons. So it's going to look for all the buttons that are in the same group and we want to change the color of it. I can do a underscore button period modulate equals color and in this case I just picked a, a slight gray color. What you could also do is do a um, change the alpha of it. So I'll modulate dot a equals 0 0.25 for instance they're both kind of about the same so whichever way you want to go will work okay so that will do is set all the color all the buttons in that group to that gray color then we want to change the button that they selected to actually be a different color so in this case i'm just going to make it white button uh, modulates equals color not white so whenever you make those icons and font, you want to make sure it's white, and so that way this modulate works. So if you make it blue and if it's already white, it'll be a lot easier. And with everything being a, a child of the, the actual button, you don't need to call it on the labels as well. So the next part is to essentially make all of the panels that we created earlier the visibility to false. And then after this, we're going to do a match statement based on the button to then make the appropriate panel visible. So background tab 
uh, visible equals false. And then match button dot name. What you could do is use an enum for this instead, but for the sake of this, I figured I would just do it in string so that way it's pretty clear. So again, you want to grab the name of the actual button that you set up earlier. And then we want to set this to true. So now we have all this set up. We then need to call it inside the touch area pressed for the touch screen area. And to do this, we're going to use a match statement. Match touch area dot name. Okay. So now we have each one of those set up. We then want to call this function based on whichever one was pressed. Now background TB that we set up earlier up here. So these are the buttons, these are the tabs. Then we're going to do each one of those accordingly again. So all this works when we run it. Oh, one other thing you can do is grab this on tab press button, go up to ready, put it in there and whatever tab you want it to be the first to be visible, set that here. So like background TB for instance. Okay, so now we, when we run it, we should see that the background is selected first. And we hit profile. Now you see profile in the center, settings, and sound. And with that same setup, you can change whatever color you want these to be. If you want them to be red, blue, green, whatever theme you're going for. But this is the essential setup for that. You can also put in like animations or other colors, backgrounds, whatever. So just for example, if we want to change that to, to red, come down there, change that white to red, we run it again, now it'll all be red. And you won't see that touch area, so you don't got to worry about the, the blue overlay kind of messing up, but kind of give you an idea. Obviously, you would want some spacing appropriately, but hopefully that helped. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching, and hope you have a great rest of your day.